entry to one of the birthplaces of the Islamic State group. On these streets, the extremists spent two years building their dark vision for a state. It's rare to get this kind of insight. Much of the town has been hit by U.S. airstrikes, but evidence of their brutality still remains. This is what's left of what IS called their slave market. For the price of a couple of hundred dollars, dozens of young women, many just girls, were wrapped in black gowns and traded here. The locals here tell me the Yazidi women were brought from across the Iraqi border. And if you look around this compound, it's hard to imagine what these women went through over the past two years. Across the road, we found a bomb-making factory containing dozens of explosives ready to use. Next door, the militants closed the only church in the town and turned it into a gym for its fighters. On the main street, another ice building hit by an airstrike. The courthouse, where sentences were handed down. We meet a man outside. He witnessed the brutality firsthand and feels that IS will return. Anyone that was sentenced was taken outside the court. If they were condemned to death, they would be shot or beheaded. Then they would hang them for three or four days. This man was one of the Islamic State commanders who tried to defend the city. He was captured after being injured by a U.S. airstrike. Having fought in both Iraq and Syria, he admits IS are struggling to cope with the aerial attacks. They've affected us a lot. It's had a big effect, to the extent that 70% of our defeats are due to airstrikes. Practically, there's nothing we can do. The airplanes use thermal imaging at night. It's easier during the day, but at night, it's a big problem. Under cover of US and British airstrikes, the Kurdish-led forces are slowly advancing in the north. We joined them just outside Raqqa, the self-declared capital of the Islamic State. These fighters are just 30 miles from the city. But it may take months, if not years, before they make it inside and defeat the Islamic State. Firas Kilani, BBC News, Northern Syria.